90 minutes and uh, all of the action that took place. So it started here, 90 minutes. Unchanged uh, change squad for both of these teams. Jamaican started the brightest. First real effort, Andre Fletcher had grand ideas. And then Thomas and Alex Marshall combined. But Gollard was solid as ever. Marshall did create glimmers of hope. In the first half, and Ricardo Gucci might have thought he did enough here to perhaps get on the score sheet. But the upright was the determining factor in the end. Daniel Smith beating all ends up. That was all for half time. Three shots on target, no shots for the Soka Warriors. Then in the second half, as it started, so it continued. And that time, Shanil Thomas forcing Denzel Smith into action. Then Kali Aubrey started his dance lessons, creating some bright sparks and moments for the Soka Warriors. Poonanjuran joined the company, Gibson as well. Nowhere near the coordinates that they would have wanted. And then Aubrey came to life in the second half. And perhaps the best chance of the Warriors. Nobody home at the back door. Nathaniel James and company couldn't get at the end of it. Alvin Jones, usually lethal from this sort of range, could only find the wall ahead of him. As the Warriors' struggles in front of goal continued. And 90 minutes, well, produced hope and some flashes, but no goals. Let's look at the numbers and see if they tell us anything special. And when it came to shots, Jamaica certainly leading in that department. Six versus three. Not on target for the Soka Warriors, though. 14 fouls committed, split right down the middle between the teams. And in terms of saves, Denzel Smith by far the busier of the goalkeepers. But the most important statistic is that of goals, and there were none to be had in this match. Goalless at the end of 90 minutes. Well, we saw the pictures, we heard the numbers. It is time now to get inside the minds of the coaches. And right now, I've got Brent Sancho, and he's standing by with Coach Angus Eve and Heimer Halgimson. Coach, both coaches here join me here. I'm very lucky to have both here at the same time. <laughs> Gentlemen, I know you wanted to get something out of this weekend. Do you think you have achieved it? Yeah, uh, most definitely. I think um, we were able to bred a lot of players who have never played for both countries before and um, giving them this opportunity to see how they could stand up under this kind of scrutiny in a derby game like this was great for them. Especially now when, it, when the fans were here, it was much more kind of intense game than it was uh, yeah. two days ago. So <laughs> for, for the younger kids, really good to play this match. Well, as we look forward to, to what's ahead for both of you, uh, how does preparation move on as you go to your respective games? No, no, I think our focus will switch to maybe a, a different kind of squad, a bigger game, etc. And, and now we have not much, two weeks, less than two weeks to prepare for our, our matches. So just a switch of focus. This was a project which is now, for me, finished in a, in a bit. And, and for, for, for Jamaica, it's the, the Nations League semi-final and then in the summer is, is the Copa America. So two big tournaments and we need to fully focus if we want to do good on those tournaments. Yeah, we, we were using this, obviously, um, in preparation for our playing match against Canada. And obviously, we have World Cup in, uh, in, in the summer also. And this was just a good exercise. It's an opportunity for us to help each other, help the region go forward, because we don't have enough football playing in the region. The guys who um, are not with the first team get these sort of runouts. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. I know both of you have uh, your assessments to do afterwards. Congratulations on what you've been able to achieve. It's great to see this between the two countries, the two giants of the Caribbean. Same, same. Thank you very thank much. You, <laughs>